Hi, I'm Pete Knight and in this video I am here to talk about the Petzl Mini Traction. This is the 2023 version 2 of the traction device, um, released as a replacement for the original black and red much loved classic Mini Traction that hasn't been available for a few years now. Um, this slots into um, Petzl's lineup of a number of different traction devices they have. We've got the Jag Traction which is a twin pulley wheel version, uh, the Nano Traction, the Micro Traction, the Mini Traction and the Pro Traction and there's been a couple of different versions of some of those over the years as well. You've also got other manufacturers producing similar devices, things like the Climbing Technology Crick or Rolling Lock, um, the Edelroid Spock uh, or the Camp Turbo Lock. Um, now these progress capture devices operate on a similar principle, you've got a pulley uh, wheel um, and a toothed or a ribbed cam so when you've loaded them up and engaged the lock the rope will travel through in one direction so you can haul up, um, but it will lock and won't go back out, so you're capturing the progress as, as you're doing the lifting. Um, some of them can have that locking mechanism disengaged, so they can just be used as a standard pulley. Some of them can be used as an ascender. Um, there's quite a number of variations and uh, little things specific to each individual model. Um, and there'll be many different reviews and how-to videos out there on the internet, and that's not what I'm here to replicate. I just want to talk specifically about the mini traction and how it might be an appropriate choice for those people who lead in a vertical cave or mine environment. Although it's not the smallest progress capture device out there, the Mini Traction comes in a really compact package. Um, it's not much bigger than the Carabiner, it's mounted on, only weighs in at 150 grams, which is the equivalent of three Mars bars. Um, so yeah, quite a nice small package really. One of the main upgrades over the version one of the Mini Traction is that now we can open the device up and install or remove a rope without taking it off of the carabiner. So once you've got it on your harness or on an anchor, it's effectively become drop proof. Um, and many of the different progress capture devices out there do have to come off the carabiner to load, which always means there's a chance of you dropping them in that critical moment during um, kind of setting up for a rescue or a haul or something like that. There's a really nice kind of two action security mechanism for opening the side plate. You've got a, a downwards move and an upwards move. All of that can be done with one gloved hand with a little bit of practice. You've got red danger indicators, both on the pulley sheaf and on the locking mechanism. So if the device isn't fully closed, you will see red when it is locked up properly. That's all hidden, so that's a nice little feature as well. Um, the cam on the mini traction can be locked in the open position as you can see here. Uh, I can release that just by pressing the button, put it into progress capture mode and to lock it back open we'll just lift it up, press the button in and it will catch and hold in that position there. So because of that we can use the mini traction both as a free floating pulley or as a progress capture pulley where we can take the rope in one direction but the cam will engage and prevent it going through in the other direction. Petzl have certified uh, this version of the mini traction for use for a number of different types of rope and cords, which makes it very versatile depending on what you're caving on. In terms of low stretch ropes, semi static ropes, it'll do 8.5 millimeters right through to 11 millimeters. So that's kind of the full spectrum from expedition specialist lightweight ropes right up to heavy duty kind of working ropes. Um, on dynamic rope, it'll do 7 to 11 millimeters. Uh, it's also approved for use on 8mm technical cords, so things like the Petzl 8mm segment, which some people are using for very lightweight SRT as well, although probably not in a professional context. Um, and it's also compatible with Petzl's Rad line, which is a 6mm technical cord, but that's kind of a very specific use on there. Um, so there's a whole wide range of different compatibilities there, so it'll work with pretty much anything you're likely to have access to for normal vertical caving work. The braking strain is 20 kilonewtons, which is a pretty serious figure, um, no problems there, but the working load limit is perhaps more relevant for us to look at. So this is working load limit of 2.5 kilonewtons either side of the pulley, which is roughly 250 kilograms. Um, 
with a single person hanging on it um, as the casualty and the rescuer hauling in on the other side or perhaps using a counterbalance that's comfortably going to cover that range. If we're dealing with higher loads, so like cave rescue loads where you might have two people in a stretcher, then you're going to need to look at something like the Pro Traction with its increased working load limit of 4 kilonewtons, 400 kilograms. But for kind of standard self rescue techniques, um, 2.5 kilonewtons would be absolutely appropriate on that. It's also worth noting though that even though it's got a minimum braking strain of 20 kilonewtons, um, pets will say that the teeth on the cam can start to damage or even sever a rope beyond four kilonewtons, depending on the diameter of the rope. So even though we're not gonna break it till we get to quite a significant load, uh, we can damage other components of the system, especially the rope long before that. So as a, as a one person self rescue tool for rescuing another single person, absolutely appropriate if we use it correctly. In terms of efficiency, the bearings on the sheaf on the Mini Traction are rated to 93% efficient, which is really good. The original version 1 was only rated for 71%, still a lot better than dragging a rope over a carabiner, 71%, but 93% is really efficient. Um, and that's only a couple of percent below the, the heavyweight Pro Traction version as well, which comes in at 95%, so that's a really good, efficient set of bearings put in there. Um, we had to see how well this will stand up to kind of caving use with all that, that kind of grit and stuff, but if its predecessor's anything to go by, um, it should be pretty capable of, of handling those environments as well. So Mini Traction is a really user-friendly device. I can open the locking side plate with one hand, I can lock the cam open with one hand with a bit of practice, no problem there. Loading the rope in, just like all the other traction devices, the pull side of the rope wants to be on the side with the teeth. We can close that up and into free pulley mode. We can press the button and engage the cam into progress capture mode. Um, that way as we lift our load up, we don't get any return on that. Um, see, with a bit of extra weight, we need to be using something like our three to one Z rig. Um, you can see how this works. Now when I pull in and let go, there's zero run back on that system, um, so really efficient um, in terms of getting the most amount of lift for every pull you do. If we're going to release this, put it down, so that might be the case we've hauled someone up a pitch, we've attached to the cow's tails and then we need to release the traction to put them back on the cow's tails, you do have to take in slightly on the device in order to release the teeth from the rope sheath to open the cam up. Um, so that's something that needs to be well practiced. You need to be able to have the ability to release the locking mechanism on here. Um, when we're doing that, we would really just do that by hand unless the casualty is secured in some other way, which means there's no way of dropping them. Um, so typically we would install a belay device, like a pencil rig, on the dead side of the rope, attach that to our harness and use our body weight to generate a lift. So when we open the pulley uh, locking cam, we've then got control of the rope. Um, so we could then kind of do a controlled lower to put that load back down where we needed it. Um, and that's one of the kind of downsides of all these super efficient traction style devices is when we release that lock, because there's almost no friction here, we can get pulled in. So there can be a little bit of a yo-yo factor going on once that cam is released. Um, and that's just something to be aware of, it can kind of pull you off balance. Um, in, in worst case scenario, it's possible for the top cam of the rig or other similar devices to contact the traction and potentially cause the rope to release by pressing on the cam. Um, just like that. There are ways to mitigate against that or different techniques we can use with rigs and tractions where that doesn't become an issue, um, but that's a subject for another video. But it's just worth highlighting um, that particular danger with very efficient progress capture devices and releasing them. So the Mini Traction is particularly suited to underground vertical leading in the hands of a skilled and trained operator. Uh, it can be loaded on and off the rope, 
without disconnecting it from the anchor point, which makes it drop proof. The cam can be locked open so that you can convert your hoist back to a lower when required. It's a small compact package, it's relatively lightweight, it's highly efficient and uh, well at current prices anyway it's not going to completely break the bank. Um, is it the only appropriate tool? Absolutely not. Um, you know, if you wanted even more efficiency, um, potentially if you were quite light, then the Pro Traction may offer you that small advantage over the Mini Traction in terms of efficiency. Um, but for the average cave instructor, the Mini Traction's probably going to be more than sufficient for that. Um, so yeah, if you're looking to upgrade uh, what you currently carry or you're shopping around for your first Progress Capture Pulley, then it's definitely one to consider. The Camp Turbo Lock is one of the only ones out there of a similar size with a similar feature set. I don't have one of those here to play with and compare to, but that might be another one to look at as well if you're shopping around. Um, so hopefully that video has been useful for you. Um, I'm not sponsored by anyone, no one's paid me to do these. This is purely for educational purposes. Um, I like carrying these, I think they're an excellent tool, so I thought I would um, put a little video together because there's so many different variations uh, and the choice out there is huge, so I thought I'd just do my little bit to try and help people make a decision on what to buy. Um, as with any technical device, um, you really need to know how to use it, so do practice uh, in a safe environment or train under the guidance of a qualified instructor. Make sure you know what you're doing with the kit before you have to rely on it for real. Um, you know, if you can't release one of these and put someone down if you needed to, that can become very serious. Um, and if you've got a small amount of money to invest, then perhaps investing it in skills training before you invest in shiny things might be a wise thing to do as well. Thanks for watching.